Cynthia Anderson Disappearance A rundown of the case as seen on Unsolved Mysteries and my own astrological interpretation of the case to the best of my abilities and to the best of my knowledge. Cynthia Anderson Disappearance A good girl running away or an abduction? An Unsolved Mysteries segment first brought attention to this case for me. This is the case of Cynthia Anderson. For those who've never heard, Cynthia Anderson was an attractive young girl who mysteriously vanished from her place of employment in Toledo, Ohio on August 4th, 1981. Anderson was working as a secretary at a law office located on East Manhattan Boulevard in North Toledo. As far as the investigation is concerned, this case remains officially unsolved and still open although there have been suspects. Cynthia Anderson was raised in a strict religious household. Her family, her boyfriend, and most of her inner social circle were all devout Christian fundamentalists. At the time of her disappearance, Cindy was working as a legal secretary, preparing to attend a Bible college in Michigan with her boyfriend. She was to quit her clerical job two weeks after she vanished. As far as anyone knew, there were no circumstances in her life that could have caused Cynthia to up and just run away. On the weeks and months prior to her disappearance, however, some ominous signs began to emerge. Cindy began to become disturbed by a series of nightmares. In these nightmares, Cindy would always end up hurt or murdered. She'd always let the man in at the door and every time the same fate would befall her she would be attacked. Also, Cindy began to allegedly receive threatening phone calls at work. A man who was in to pay off a legal fee at the law office noticed this himself. The phone rang, she picked up, then as fast as she picked up, she placed the phone back on the receiver. Perhaps the most disturb disturbing scene of all was a spray-painted message on a wall across the parking lot from where she worked. In big bold letters, a message appeared twice in the months prior to her disappearance. Both times the message read, I love you, Cindy, by GW. There are lots of Cindy's in the world, in a city the size of Toledo, but she wondered. The message was visible for about six months, then painted over again. Within weeks, the same message reappeared. The police struggled to find a person who might have known Sid Cindy with those initials. The building maintenance man had those initials and was a suspect until his death. The police could not find anyone else with those initials at church, at school, or in Cindy's group of friends. Then Cindy vanished. Police had little to go on. Then, a month later, Police received a mysterious phone call from a woman saying she knew something about the Cynthia Anderson case. This woman, who did not give her identity, mentioned Cindy was being held captive in a basement of a white house. The woman went on to say there are two houses, side by side, owned by the same family but the family was out of town. The son was supposedly the party holding Cindy captive in the basement. This woman could not give or name names, though. Theories abound. Among the strongest is the crazed stalker. This would partly explain the I love you Cindy message and the threatening phone calls, among other things, if she was being stalked. Then, there's also talk she may have stumbled upon something at work. There are lawyers who were ultimately charged with a drug conspiracy who worked with and had clients through the law office Cindy worked for. These people may have thought she heard something she was not supposed to hear. Cindy was going to a Bible college, thus leaving the job soon so she could possibly talk. So could they have kidnapped and murdered her? She could have stumbled upon something. If so, this would have tied in with the two house captive theory as well. 
I've heard of drug operations with multiple homes or buildings on the premises. There would be one home for living and one for operations. Side by side would be a bonus. The third theory is a serial killing. Two known predators were on the loose in the Toledo area at the time Cindy vanished. These two were a killer team, brothers. Although they have denied involvement in the Cynthia Anderson disappearance, they still remain suspects. Lastly, this theory is probably the most interesting. This theory involves Cindy leaving on her own. It is known she lived a pretty sheltered life at the time of her disappearance. Perhaps she had a taste of the world for the first time through her job and wanted to escape the oppression. Cindy might have thought I'm heading to a Bible college with what is probably my future husband and my life is now set in stone unless I leave. But her bank account which had a substantial amount in it was never touched. Her social security was never touched or used anywhere else. All she had when she disappeared were her purse and her keys. Surely too if she was sheltered all her life she would have been extremely naive, unless she decided to strike out on her own, come across another person, was too trusting until it was too late, then something happened to her after? Why wouldn't she touch her bank account at the least though? Countless volunteer and police efforts were amassed in the search for Cynthia Anderson, but to no avail. Let's see if astrology can help us with this case. I used a noon chart since that's the approximate time she was discovered missing. And we know she went to work that morning to do her regular duties. Cynthia Anderson disappearance. I cast the chart for August 4th, 1981, Toledo, Ohio, USA, 12 o'clock p.m. noon Eastern Daylight Time. Source, Unsolved Mysteries segment, aired January 3rd, 1990 on NBC. Many mysteries surround the Cynthia Anderson disappearance. Perhaps astrology might give us possible solutions. I say possible, or at least some clues into the case. We'll start with Mars. Mars sits at the midheaven, traveling through Cancer. Mars rules guns, knives, and violence while cancer rules the home. With this placement being brought to someone's home, or any home, and being tortured is a distinct possibility here. Interestingly, as the day progressed, Mars and Cancer moved into the eighth house of death. This could signify she could have been tortured to death and possibly died in a home as the day progressed. Or she could have been tortured and died a different day but in the same house. Remember this is an event chart and events could last for years like serial killings so Mars here could also be symbolic. A mysterious caller had called the Toledo Police Department not long after she vanished saying Cindy is being held in a basement. Neptune sits in Sagittarius in the third house of everyday errands and small talk. Cindy could have been deceived by someone she knew, someone she would have let the door open for. Neptune rules illusions and is the great deceiver. It might have been a potential love interest or maybe just someone who put on the mask of a friend, something of that nature. She might have made small talk, third house again, with this person, but he conned her or deluded her, Neptune again, into thinking his intentions were honorable. Being someone from her that she knew or the immediate neighborhood, someone she trusted but was deceived. Libra occupies the twelfth house, house of endings in the unseen. Moon, ruler of emotions, sits here in peaceful Libra in the house of endings. I believe she was ultimately at peace emotionally with whatever fate transpired however traumatic the initial event might have been. This makes sense with this placement. Her faith in the Christian God and a semblance of some type of hereafter is evident. 
Moon conjunct Jupiter in the house of endings, and the unseen further illustrate the above point. I believe Cindy was emotionally at peace, Moon and Libra here, because of her philosophical spiritual bent, conjunct Jupiter both in Libra. Curiously though, Saturn also appears here. This is symbolic as the great teacher and how she met her end. The other circumstances were dour, yet it was peaceful. Also, her family learned from this event. Prayer chains were immediately established because of the untimely end of a cycle. Jupiter, spirituality, and house of endings again. With Cindy's disappearance, an error in the family ended, so to speak. Remember at the time of her disappearance, Mars was square the moon. A square can, look, can work harmoniously as well as against. What may have transpired on the outside, taken to a house and possibly tortured that is, may have been a conflict with how she felt. As stated, she and her family were all devout Christian fundamentalists. What I see here points to a possible torture in the home, but she seemed to be convinced where she was going. Her God would take care of her, so to speak. Curiously, Scorpio rules the second house cusp. Second house deals with money, finances, and material possessions. Scorpio rules the mob and things associated with it, like crime, dealings, and pornography. There was a theory she overheard some dealings in the law office she was employed at. These dealings involved drugs, Neptune and third again, small talk, everyday errands again working with this placement as well. We know mobs and gangs operate on the principle if something hinders your profits or freedoms, get rid of it. I believe if this is true, she would have overheard and been armed with information that could have meant financial ruin for the parties involved. Mob or gang finances might have been involved or at stake here. Murder would certainly be an unusual and extreme way of dealing with ripe finances, Uranus here, and Scorpio. If Cindy disappeared voluntarily, as some suggest, then why were her bank account and social security never touched? This could be Scorpio again, only this time acting on behalf of Cindy. The money was hoarded and untouched traits belonging to Scorpio. Scorpio also being the sign of death, wouldn't her money at least be gone if she did disappear voluntarily? Wouldn't the account be closed? On the Unsolved Mysteries segment, her father said something to the effect of, My hope is that my daughter is living a normal life, perhaps with loss of memory. It's always good to have hope and Michael Anderson seemed like a sincere man. bless his soul now but unless she disappeared voluntarily then i have my doubts cindy could be living a normal life if she's living at all her father still had hope because of his strong faith and i commend him for that and may he rest in peace and finally possibly know the answers but we on this earth may never know the solution to this mystery Thank you. This is Astro Sleuth, over and out. Peace.